Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobian History. Today we are going to talk about a renaissance profession. Last week I did a medieval professions video about prostitution and this video is kind of an extension to that. As I said in the beginning this isn't really a medieval profession, it started more in the renaissance but I'm still gonna group this video together in my medieval professions uh, series. So with that introduction out of the way, we'll start talking about the courtesans. So I'll explain the difference between a prostitute and a courtesan first. A prostitute, regardless of high or low class, is a woman who sleeps with anyone, provided they can meet her price. A courtesan is a woman who sleeps with far fewer men, often only having one official protector, but possibly also still carrying on with others. She tends to be independent and she is very selective about which men she services. Money is not always the main factor either. It could also be the man's social status, power, reputation and compatibility to the courtesan. And on the other hand, sex isn't necessarily the main attraction for clients either, although it certainly plays a big role as well. But for the client it's more a prestige thing. Courtesans could be seen as the aristocrats of the prostitution industry. They were often well educated, versed on the politics of the day and underwent careful training. They were also able to converse knowledgeably with the men who populated the highest levels of society, such as royalty and noblemen. There's also a significant difference between having a mistress or a courtesan. What differentiates the courtesan from the mistress is the notion of companionship and status. The courtesan sold herself, both body and mind, as a career. A courtesan could seduce a man with her intelligence and her sophistication. On the other hand, a mistress gave away her love, strictly for the purpose of having an affair, and often had children with her lover as well. Courtesans generally appeared just after the Middle Ages, in the early Renaissance, and the word courtesan comes from the Italian cortigiana, which is a feminine of cortigiano, in English meaning a courtier. The term at first came to refer to a person who attends the court, and after that it came to mean a well-educated and independent woman. Eventually that turned into a trained artist or artisan of dance and singing, especially one associated with wealthy, powerful or upper class society, who was given luxuries and status in exchange for entertainment and companionship. The word came into English during the 16th century from the French term courtisan, which they in turn had borrowed from Italian. There were also male figures comparable to the courtesan, and as the courtesans served the men of high society, these male figures served the influential women of high society. In Italy, these men were referred to as cecispeo, or in France you had the chevalier servant who did this job. One type of courtesan was known in Italy as the cortigiana onesta, Translated into English, this means the honest courtesan. This is the sort of courtesan most often romanticized and was treated more or less equal to the women of nobility and were found at the higher class courts. Another type of courtesan was the cortigiana di lume and these served the lower classes. The honest courtesan was usually well educated and worldly, sometimes even more so than the average upper class woman. And these courtesans also often had careers as performers or artists. They were typically chosen on the basis of their social class, conversational skills, intelligence, companionship, as well as their physical attributes. It was usually their wit and personality that set them apart from the regular women at court. Sex was only a part of the services the courtesans provided, 
For example, they were well dressed and ready to engage and participate in a variety of topics, ranging from arts to music to politics. So you could split courtesans into two different types. One did it for monetary gain, and the other did it more so for social benefit. First we'll go over the courtesans who did it for their primary employment. Courtesans from non-wealthy backgrounds could provide companionship for extended periods, no matter what their own feelings or commitments might have been at the time. They would have had a lower social status in their circles and were also subject to religious disapproval because of the immorality of their reliance upon courtesanery as their source of income, as these courtesans were solely dependent on their benefactor or benefactors financially. Often courtesans serving in this capacity began their careers as regular prostitutes, although many came to the profession by other means as well. It was not uncommon for courtesans to have signed contracts with their benefactors. These contracts were written up and witnessed by lawyers and were legally binding. Most included some provision for the financial welfare of the courtesan beyond the end of the relationship. Occasionally, courtesans were passed from one benefactor to another as well. Often, in these cases, the courtesan had served her benefactor well, so that the benefactor, when ending the affair, would pass them on to another benefactor of wealth as to do the courtesan a favor, giving her continued employment. Or another option would be that the benefactor would set the courtesan up in an arranged marriage to a semi-wealthy benefactor. But in the event that the courtesan had angered or dissatisfied a benefactor, they could find themselves cast out of wealthy circles, returning to a life of street prostitution. So the other type of courtesan did not for the money, but for social benefit. These courtesans were from wealthy backgrounds, either by birth or marriage, and they were acting as courtesans only for social or political advancements, either for themselves or even their spouses, as in some cases, courtesans were actually already married. But the husbands they had were usually of a lower social class compared to the courtesans' clients. In these cases, their relationship with those of a higher social status had the potential to improve her as well as her spouse's status, and so more often than not, the husband was aware of his wife's profession. The benefactor was also aware of the political or social favors that were expected by the courtesan, and the courtesan was also well aware of what she was expected to do to earn those favors. So affairs of this sort would often be relatively short-lived, ending when either the courtesan or the courtesan's spouse, in case she was married, received the status or political position they had desired. Or it could also end when the benefactor chose the company of another courtesan, in which case the benefactor would compensate her financially if the status she desired was not achieved. This was generally a safe affair, as the courtesan was not solely dependent on the benefactor financially. Rather, it was simply an affair of benefits gained for all those involved. Relationships of this sort were common during the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. Even in the early 20th century, relationships like this were still around, and were generally accepted in wealthy circles. If you'd like to know more about the profession of prostitution, the link to the video will be on screen right now. Also, due to the nature of this video, I suspect YouTube might demonetize it, so I just want to shout out my Patreon page, which will be linked on screen as well. So if you want to support me, you can check out my Patreon page as well. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and especially my $15 patrons, Parker Dye and G. David.